back to Sunrise as we continue this morning. April the 7th would have marked the 143rd birthday of a woman who has been called the mother of black freedom in South Africa. Beauty of the heart, the life and times of Charlotte Manya Matlaka captures the journey of a powerful and determined African girl's journey to get an education and free her people in the process. Zubeda Jaffa, award-winning journalist and author and writer in residence at the University of the Free States Communication Science, joins us this morning uh, to take us through this book. Uh, good Good morning to you, Zubeda, and thanks very much for joining us. Good morning, Penny. Wonderful to be here. Great stuff. So let's uh, talk about the, this book, A uh, Heart, uh, Beauty of the Heart. Um, you know, we've we've come to know Charlotte McClack, I guess, for this generation because the hospital is named after her. And those who are, uh, you know, deep in history, they know that there's a submarine uh, also named, a hair, named after her. And she was uh, there at the founding uh, of uh, the ANC. But who was uh, Charlotte McClack? Because that's what this book tries to tell us. She was essentially somebody that was very passionate about education. And I always say that she started the education train. She got onto that education train uh, in, in 19... Well, actually, earlier than that, but she graduated in 1901 mm. in the U.S. Mm. And she came back and not only came back to teach the herd boys of Ramakhopa village, but she also helped to build school, a school and uh, a college, which still exists, and became one of the most, the foremost woman leaders um, of her time. Mm, mm. And she died in 939, but by then she had made her mark. There was nobody else more sort of prominent than her. Now, I just, I mean, reading through the book, it, it weaves through, um, you know, historic times like um i mean i'm saying she she would have been like 143 so it talks about like you know before 1901 before we even you know uh, um when when um missionaries were like teaching in schools she was she already had gone overseas to study and she already in, was already straddling a world of you know being an african who's dealing with her, her culture and heritage and then living in america and you know uh, interacting with, with with white women she was just a, you know, a force in, in, in her own right. But when you look at like what she was doing, it's, it's almost like depicting the modern challenges that we're facing um, as South Africa. Yeah, well, it was quite extraordinary that she was part of a choir that went to sing for the Queen uh, in Britain in 1892. Mm. And she was 21 years old, you know, at the time. And yet she met with Emily Pankhurst, mm. who was, the, was 40 then and who was the leader of the of the the uh, of British women mm. uh, trying to fight for the for the, for the vote. rights of white of white women yes, in the, in the UK. for the vote yeah for the vote, so yeah. that I found quite extraordinary because how was it possible for this twenty one year You're old to, yeah you know to interact with somebody who was at such a sort of pinnacle of activism in in Britain mm. and then she goes to the U to the U S it's all by chance mm. I mean mm. it's very much by chance and she the Amy Church. Uh, kind of adopts her and she yeah, she studies. Gets to, she's instrumental in bringing the AME church to, to, to South, South Afri Africa to South Africa as well. And yeah. then um, she she's there and she's a te she's a pupil or a learner mm. of uh, W. E. B. Du Bois, who was you know the front runner of Pan Africanism. Pan -Africanism yes, yeah. uh, you know. In the 21st, in the 20th century, uh, but even as early as that, she finds herself as a woman who is is surrounded by you know very influential and powerful men. She's probably always the only woman in that space. Yeah. Uh, do you? I mean, even w with the formation of the of the ANC, it's almost like she's there by chance because she has forced her way into all sorts of situations. <laughs> yes, her husband is in, is clearly invited, mm. um, but she plonks herself down there as well and, yeah. and there she is at the launch of the ANC and I have yet to find one person in this country mm. from you know university people to anybody who can say to me they know that fact mm. and so why was that fact kept away from us? Well, I mean, if, if you followed her life, like I came to know that because I, I had followed her life. But, but she just, she was like, I'm here and where are the other women? Yeah. Like literally, I can imagine how she was like, where are the other women yeah. and can we find them? Yeah. I, I also have something to say. Yeah. And that was probably, that was also not the first, uh, you know, 
organization that she went to, even with with, with, with the church, because she was also struggling patriarchy within the church, yes. uh, you know, in, in her village, yeah. uh, in the education uh, yeah. system. But when you put through this book, um, the way you wrote it, you when you, you go back to history and you bring uh, current uh, situations. Was that a specific reason why you looked at writing like that? Were you thinking about who you wanted to, to read this book specifically? Well, I was amazed. I mean, I'm not, I'm quite interested in history generally, mm. but I was also not too familiar with some of the early history. You know, mm. we know about, uh, from school, we know, oh, diamonds were discovered in Kimberley. In Kim yeah. But you don't know that people were actually completely, you know, prevented from getting any benefit from diamond mm, mining. Mm. I mean, put into camps with mm, barbed mm, wire around mm, it. Mm, mm, you know, black people were, were, were denied. Mm. Uh, and instead, those resources were taken. And universities like uh, University of Cape Town and Stellenbosch were built from those resources mm. or sent to Britain, mm, you know. Mm. Now, this sort of thing, you, you, we, and it was way back, you know, in the early, in the late 1800s. Mm. So usually we concentrate, we start our story. Uh, 1910, there was union, and in 1912, there was um, the launch of the ANC. Mm. You know, the and story of resistance it, yes. it starts started way, it starts way be, be, before Resistance that. or, in, you know, kind of efforts by also this particularly uh, intellectual strata to mm. stand up and, 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 and stand for everybody. Mm. Uh, uh, it's phenomenal and we should know about these people. We should know about Sal Plaiki. We should know of all these Pixli Kaseme. Mm. We, should, we should know what happened then because they were very young, mm. very young people who went out there and 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 excelled. I mean, they were, they were, you know, I mean, Charlotte getting a BS, BSc degree mm. in 1901, mm. when most women in South Africa, when no other women. We're not even allowed yeah, to. Yeah, and a an very a small, a small, yeah. small handful of white women mm. were allowed to study at at UCT, mm. which was four a college, five. yeah, at the time. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to have to leave it at that. It's truly an exciting book, and I would encourage a lot of people to to get a copy of it. Uh, Beauty of the Heart, uh, the Live and Times of Charlotte uh, Manya McClick, and of course, uh, Zubeda Joy for joining us uh, for the conversation this morning, who is uh, the author uh, of the book. Well, the big question is, what is your contribution uh, to the current challenges that our country is facing? And maybe this book can help you unlock your own uh, potential and make uh, your own history.